Hi everyone, I wanna take you quickly through how I present my lecture on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to my AP Bio students. Now, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is part of the evolution unit, which is gonna be towards the end of the year if you're doing the units in the order of the course guide. So kids should have already had genetics at this time, and that really helps if they've had genetics before they do Hardy-Weinberg. So if you take a look at the screen here, I start out by telling, reminding them about how evolution is change. And Hardy-Weinberg equ equilibrium, I ask them, what does the word equilibrium mean? Well, equilibrium implies balance or stability. So in a way, we can think of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium being a condition that's the opposite of evolution, when a population is stable and is not changing. Now, for Hardy Weinberg, for a population to be in Hardy Weinberg equilibrium, five conditions have to be met. Large population size, that way you're less likely to have genetic drift. Random mating, that way you have less inbreeding. No mutations, and usually mutations are pretty rare anyway. Uh, no gene flow or migration, and nobody's moving into the population, nobody's moving out. And no selection of any kind, natural, artificial, or sexual selection. No genotype should give an advantage to an individual over a different genotype. If those five conditions are met, then the population will be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And if a population's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then the following two equations apply. For a le and these equations are on the AP Bio formula sheet. To find the frequency of an allele in a population or gene pool, P plus Q equals one. P would represent the property, uh, the probability of inheriting a copy of the dominant allele, which here we're representing by big A. Um, in college textbooks, they often uh, represent, oh, I don't think that's off screen. In college book uh, textbooks, sometimes they represent the frequency of uh, the dominant allele instead of being big A, being A1. Okay, Q represents the probability of the recessive allele, which is little a. And in the pop, the pop gen simulation we're gonna look at, uh, the frequency of the recessive allele is represented as A2. So sometimes in college books, they use A1 and A2 instead of big A and little a, because not all genes behave in a straight up dominant and recessive order. Anyway, so, but for purposes, let's just use uh, big A and little a for our discussion here. The other equation is the equation for genotype frequencies. Uh, P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one. P squared is the probability of having the homozygous dominant genotype. The probability of you inheriting two dominant alleles at the same time. And at this point, I usually take out two pennies and I asked the class, uh, what's the probability, if I flip this coin, what's the probability of me getting heads? And everybody will say one half. Good. Then I pick up both pennies at the same time. If I flip these at the same time, what's the probability of me getting two heads at the same time? And they'll say one fourth. And I'll ask, well, how did you get that? And the way they got that is multiplying the, pro the probability of getting one head, which is one half, by the probability of getting the second head, which is also one half. So the probability of getting one dominant allele is P. The probability of getting two dominant alleles at the same time is P times P, and that's where the P squared comes from, okay? Uh, let's skip to Q squared. Q squared, by the same logic, is your probability of getting two copies of the recessive allele, okay? 2PQ is your probability of getting the heterozygous genotype. And you have to have a two in front of that. And here's why. If you have two heterozygous parents, uh, let's say uh, dad is big A, little a, mom is big A, little a, and you do the simple Punnett square, there's only one way to make a homozygous dominant individual. You have to get the dominant allele from both parents, right? There's only one way to make a homozygous recessive individual. You have to get the recessive allele from both parents. But there are two ways to make a heterozygote. Let's say this is the male parent, this is the female parent, okay? You could be heterozygous if you got the dominant allele from dad and the recessive allele from mom, 
or you could be heterozygous. The other possibility is if you got the dominant allele from mom and the recessive allele from dad. That's why you've got that two there. Okay, so this tells us genotype and frequencies. Um, I think the best tip I can give you for solving uh, Hardy-Weinberg problems and for you to tell your students is to start with the recessive phenotype. And here's, what, here's why. There's only one way to get a recessive. That's to be little a, little a. And all the recessives have the same genotype. So if you look at an individual and they're recessive, you know what its genotype is. If you started with the dominant individuals, you wouldn't know what genotype the dominant individuals had because some of them are going to be homozygous dominant, some of them are going to be heterozygous, and they're basically going to look the same on the outside in terms of phenotype. Does that make sense? So let's so start with the recessive and let's uh, do a sample problem. So let's say in a hardy Weinberg population of mice, black fur is dominant to yellow fur. Okay. If 91% of the mice are black, what percentage of the population is heterozygous? Now, black is dominant, so we don't want to start with the 91%. But if we know that 91% uh, of the mice have the dominant phenotype, okay, that means the other 9%, 100 minus 91, have to have the recessive phenotype, and that we can work with. So let's turn that into a percentage. 9% is 0.09. Set that equal to Q squared, which tells us how many are homozygous recessive. Take the square root of both sides, and you get Q equals 0.3. If Q, the recessive allele, has a frequency of 0.3, then P, going back up to this equation, has to be 0.7, because P plus Q has to equal 1. All right? Now, the question asked us to find out what percentage of the population is heterozygous. Well, heterozygous are 2p squared, so the frequency of heterozygous would be 2 times 0 0.07, which is p, or excuse me, 0 0.7, which is p, times 0 0.3, which is q, which it works out to 42% of the population is heterozygous. So that's how I introduce uh, the concept of Hardy-Weinberg equal equilibrium. And then I give my students a whole bunch of practice problems because mm -hmm. practice makes permanent, right? Okay, uh, hope that uh, helps and I'll see you guys next time.